Canadian journalist John Green recorded thousands of Sasquatch sightings since the 1970s. Big, hairy, ape-like creatures stalking the woods of North America. What some have theorized as surviving members of the pre-human Gigantopithecus and others find origin in indigenous myths. But does Sasquatch live through these stories alone? Or could such a creature really be alive today? Western United States has long been a hotbed of Sasquatch reports. John Green investigated over 250 claims in the province alone. One publicized encounter comes from just outside Nelson, BC in 1962 when local John Bringsley believed to have seen a Sasquatch in Kokanee Creek Park. Our team investigates. Kokanee Creek runs off a glacier through wild old growth and alpine. We find the original article in the Nelson Daily News. On the seventh day of August 1962, I went up Seventh Mile Road in the vicinity of Coconut Park. It was just about 7.30 in the morning when I went up there and started to pick berries. I was about 100 yards off an old logging road and I was down on my knees picking and the berries were plentiful. This bush that I was picking on finally gave out. And I got off my knees and rose and turned around to look for another bush, and I saw this animal standing there. About 50 feet away on a slight rise in the ground, staring at me. The sight of the animal paralyzed me. At first I thought it was like a bear, but when I looked closer and realized it wasn't an animal, it was more like a big hairy ape. It was coated in steel gray hair and was very tall. I would say between seven and nine feet. It was watching me, coming towards me. I dropped a bucket of berries and took off. I sprinted the hundred yards to the car and drove recklessly down the logging road. Mr. Bringsley returned to the scene with a hunting party. But no beast was found.
footprints, films, and eyewitness accounts all have to have something behind them, either animal or hoax. If animal, then it is one of the most interesting animals imaginable, and if it really is nothing but self-delusion, hallucination, or some compulsion to tell wild stories, such phenomena should be of interest also. This is my Bigfoot story. So I was living in the Kootenays of British Columbia in a very small town called Winlaw. It's an old hippie town. There's not many people there. It's quiet, very dark. At night, there's no, there's no activity. Nobody's hanging out, you know? But this one night, I walked out to go for a smoke, and I walked out to the road. And it was, you know, it was one of the darkest nights that I had experienced when I was there. Pitch black, like, couldn't even see my hand looking out. Just the lights from the house were shining on the road. And I remember just dead silence. It was completely quiet. Um, I'm having my smoke. And then out of nowhere, I start to hear this unhuman, just guttural howling. It was, it hit me to my core, you know? Sometimes you listen to like a song or something and it sends chills down your spine. That was what this was like, but you know, on another level. I was actually scared. And I heard this, it was like a howling noise, like, sounded like somebody was dying almost, but it wasn't human. And I've heard lots of animals in the forest, you know, like I've heard coyotes and mountain lions. They sound pretty, like, pretty crazy, but this was nothing like that. And it's almost impossible to describe. But it went on for maybe 30 seconds, and it was just terrifying. And I had no other reaction but to freeze and then run inside, you know, which was toward the noise. But yeah, I'll never forget that, that night. And, and I've talked to people about their experiences with, you know, supernatural beings. This was definitely something supernatural. Some big, some big creature in the woods. Yeah. Big boy. Yeah. Big hairy boy. Terrifying. Cool. Yeah.